The Standard Bank says these allegations are viewed in a serious light and has confirmed that due process is being followed internally concerning the matter. It says that it will cooperate with any law enforcement agencies. According to a televised investigative documentary by Al Jazeera, staff at Standard Bank, Absa Bank and Sasfin Bank are alleged to have been on the payroll of a money launderer. APSA says it detected alleged illicit tobacco and gold-based money laundering activities in early 2020. It says subsequent investigations uncovered a broad network which linked the illicit tobacco trade and gold-based money laundering activities. The bank says it has been working with multiple law enforcement agencies on this matter and has fully discharged its regulatory reporting obligations and will not tolerate any illegal conduct from any of its employees. The documentary that has exposed the level of illicit financial flows and gold smuggling in Zimbabwe has sent shock waves in Africa, plundering of African resources, by some leaders on the continent has led to countries struggling to address the issues of poverty, unemployment and access to services. Governments failure to implement measures to combat money laundering and terrorism financing can lead to the country being grey listed. In February, the Financial Action Task Force announced that South Africa and Nigeria had been grey listed. Financial Action Task Force alerted us to this problem and said South Africa there are certain deficiencies in your systems to deal with the matter of money laundering like this and that and the other. Please attend to this. And we didn't which is what has led to the grey listing. Because in the end, they must then say, this particular country does not have enough of the measures to deal with this. So in that you get labeled as a country that is, as a money launderer. That's very got very serious negative consequences. Because then the global markets will deal with you as a money launderer. Mm. Well, you had the President uh, Ramaphosa responded to this and said, we will attend to this matter. <laughs> uh, I believe that was a serious commitment. It can't be other than a serious commitment. <laughs> uh, we, we have to deal with it. President Cyril Ramaphosa has made a commitment to ensure that South Africa is removed from the list. Our intention is to get out of the grey listing uh, so that everyone can know that we have addressed all these issues that have to do with money laundering as well as financing of uh, terrorism uh, because uh, we, we do treat what uh, the, the FATF has put forward to us with a great deal of seriousness as we are a signatory uh, of uh, these international uh, bodies, uh, including FATF. So we want to comply, we want to achieve precisely what they have said to us. So steps are being taken and uh, they are quite extensive and involved. So I'm sure that Within the stated period, uh, Honourable Chairperson, we should be able to achieve uh, the goal that we've set for ourselves. The issue of corruption and money laundering is a huge problem in the region. The issue of uh, illicit financial flows out of Africa is legion. We have a study, a AU Commission study, in which some of your leaders were involved. I think it was President Becky. So we know that billions of dollars have been leaving the continent illicitly for a long time. But the, the novelty of the Al Jazeera is the extent to which the elites, what I've described elsewhere as the comprador, 
bourgeoisie in the state in particular, who have been facilitators and beneficiaries of these illicit uh, uh, financial flows. And the Al Jazeera uh, uh, episodes, the two which have been aired so far, confirm for most of us what we have known for many years. And, and, and uh, I'm glad that in South Africa, at least the banks concerned have begun investigations. But in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. even after the two stunning episodes, there's dithering. Yeah, there's little or no, or no word at all from the, mm -hmm. from the uh, authorities on this, especially when the very top leadership is implicated. Yeah. As is the case in the in the case of President Nangawa, his name is very prominent in the in the in the whole uh, all all the disclosures, and and thirdly in another country, um, a president would have stepped aside to allow for investigations or commission of inquiry, but that's unlikely to happen in Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwean government is not commenting on these allegations and no action has been taken against those who are implicated in this transnational crime. Sophie Mkwena, SABC News, Johannesburg.